you need to know in details the cone sections. Um, well, definition of the cone section. So, a cone section is a curve. So, it's one dimension object. And it's formed by intersection, a double cone and one plane. Uh -huh. Then we have four possibilities. Well, actually, three. Uh, the first one, parabola. Parabola is, is a curve that has only one branch open in a specific direction. I want to study in detail. Mm, I promise that today we study in detail everything. But this is the, the quick detail, no? And now, no, 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 no in detail. Uh -huh. um, parabola is, is open, have only one branch, and open in one specific direction, maybe outward, downward, left, right. And the circle and the elixir is the same thing. I want to explain in detail the differences between circle and ellipse. But ellipse and circle both are closed figures. Closed curve. Uh -huh. And hyperbola is also another way to intersecting a plane and the double cone. No? In this case, we have two branches. Okay, as of course, two branch case open and open in different directions. Okay, yeah, I want to study how you identification and the equation, the direction, da, 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 da. Okay, so now in, conc in conclusion, we have the three kinds of the cone sections. Remember the circle and the elixir is approximately the same. The circle is a particular case of the elixir. Okay, we, you, you understand why? What is the condition to say the same thing? Uh -huh. Now, uh, first of all, we focus in the elixir. Uh -huh. This is very, very, very important to be familiar with this specific point. Okay, you, when you are doing the graph of the any elixir, we are doing in no omission, center, forces. We have two focus. In plural, it's called fossi, two vertex, and co vertex. Oh, not necessarily. Some people call. Uh, what basically you have two axes. You have the major axis, que es the big one, and the minor axis, que es the small one. In a specific case of the circle, the major axis and the, and the minor is the same, it's equal. That is the reason it's a circle. No? But in Elise, no, in Elise we have two axes, the major and the minor. Uh, what's the problem? The major or the minor maybe it's located parallel or coincident with the x-axis, that's what we call horizontal elixir. Okay? I promise, guys, that we discuss in detail everything. Uh, uh, otherwise, when the major axis is parallel or coincident with the y-axis, that's a vertical elixir. That you immediately identify. So normally in the problem, the information is given is the, is the equation. The equation is given, and so I can help, I can explain in detail. This is just quick review to understand or motivation the thing we start to study. This is the topic of the leaks. Now parabola. Parabola, you know, uh, you are familiar because parabola is actually quadratic function. Uh -huh. However, we study now in general. We have four kinds. Four kinds of oh, parabola. Parabola can open up, open down, open to the right, or open to the left. And that depending, well, depending of the one specific parameter that I want to explain in your moment. No? The most important uh, characteristic or thing that you need to know about parabola is a vertex, only one, a focus, only one, a directrix is a line, axial symmetry, 
Um, this is in Latin language, like to write to. In English is focal diameter. Focal diameter. Okay, that's what we have. And this is hyperbola. Well, no, hyperbola is different. Hyperbola has contained two branch. And we have again center, vertex, focus. And we have one more thing as an asymptote. Okay, I want to explain in detail now. Okay, okay, nice. Let's go now to the one script that I have in Desmos. Well, let me try to find. Okay, it's about the definition of the list. Okay, let me try to share the screen to show you the finition of the leaks. Okay. Do you see Desmos? Do you see? Yes. Okay. This is the finition. This is the finition is uh, elixir is a set of points that satisfy that condition. So we have two famous points. Okay, it's a fossil. In this example, okay, you can see now, it's the point 4,0 and negative 4,0. And the distance from the fossil to any point on the lexi, the sum of this distance, okay, I, call, I call here, look, look here. I call D1, yeah, I call D2. This is D1 is the distance from from this to this, it's a smaller in that case, and D2 is the other distance, and the sum of the distance, unbelievable, but it's true, is equal constant, equal to. This is the definition of the ellipse. It's the set of the point that satisfy that condition. From two, a specific point I call fossil, two fossil. Uh -huh the distance from any point on the lexic case, the red curve, the sum, the sum of these two segments is always constant. And by the way, this is equal the distance of the major axis, because the major axis in this case, F5, look, so this is the center of this is 0, 0,0, center. But the distance for the one by the f5 is 5,0. The distance is um, negative 5,0. In total, we have 10 linear unit from one vertex to another vertex, and the 10 is equal to this. This is the formal definition of the ellipse. Uh -huh. However, I want to take advantage and, um, you know, uh, emphasize we have major axis and minor axis. In this case, the major axis is coincident with the x-axis. Uh, and the, mm, the distance in between the vertex is 10. And the minor axis is this is very cool, it's coincident with the y-axis. And the distance is 3, 3, is 6 in total. No? Major, minor, major, major is the major is the big. Minor is the small. This idea is clear. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And this is a formal definition. So let me now to take advantage in this most uh -huh, to explain in detail one important parameter for the elixir get the eccentricity. Eccentricity. Eccentricity is, you know, you know, you know. Okay, the distance, so this is the equation of the one hypothetic elixir. Look, a flashing. Uh huh. And this is A and this is B. Okay, what is the difference between A and B? A is always the semi, semi uh, major axis. So you have two numbers, A and B. A is always the bigger in the elixir. Uh huh. In this case, I declare A equal 10 and B equal 5.9. This is a crazy number. This is not important. Uh -huh. uh, however, this is the major uh, is associated with the x-axis. That is the reason that this is horizontal elixir, right? 
Uh -huh. You can change. Well, of course, you can change. Uh, I want to change. Uh, the eccentricity. The eccentricity is a parameter that indicates us. How round that or how flat is our ellipse? Suppose. Suppose that I decrease in B. Look, this parameter is eccentricity. In this case, 0 0.8. Suppose this. Oh, eccentricity is. You see what happened with the focus? The focus approached to the vertex. And eccentricity approached to the one. So completely, completely, completely flat. The eccentricity is almost no one, but it's almost one. This is the eccentricity. The eccentricity, by definition, is the ratio between C, que es the distance fo focal, focal distance, uh, que es the distance from the center to any focus, que in this case is a point something, uh -huh, and, and A. Okay, in this case is a point something divided by 10 is 0 0.88. Uh -huh. This is the eccentricity. It's a parameter that indicates us. All right, let me continue. Okay, let me continue. Now I want to do in different direction. Look, I want to decrease in A. Um, you see what's going on. Well, the focus approach it. The fo focus approach it. Oh, the focus approach it. Suppose que I, I, I select exactly the same value, 4.6. 4.6, let me try to type it directly to see it clear. 6. Oh, to say in this moment, you see when the A and B is the same, the two focus is converted in only one, que by the way, is the center, and the centricity is zero. Okay, conclusion, fantastic. The conclusion, eccentricity is the parameter that gives me information how rounded or how flat is our elixir. Eccentricity is zero, it's perfect circle. So a circle is a particular case of the elixir in which the eccentricity is equal to zero. And the center and the focal coincident. It's coincident. They are coincident. Uh -huh. Now, if the I change something, I change A or B, so now, in this case, the major axis lie on the x-axis, but no, no, all we have it because, for example, in this case, look, the major axis lie on the y-axis, uh -huh, because, because, and this is script I call A and B, but actually, A is the bigger. In this case, is look, in this case, B is uh, A, sorry, is 6.37. And B is also 320 because I switch, you know, and the letter, so fortunately, we cannot switch in the script of the Georgia. So the most important thing is we have two axes, major and minor. How do you know uh, in what axis lie? Well, depending, no? depending on the example. See the big number, case A, is associated with the X, our elixir horizontal. See the big number, que es always A, uh -huh, es asociado con el Y, therefore, my elixir es vertical. Like that. Okay? Horizontal, vertical. Any question? Do you understand the basic idea? Basic, basic, basic. I promise que you see now example, and the example you clarify this idea. Okay? Uh -huh. Any question, guy? No? Come on, participation. It's clear so far. Yeah, it's clear so far. Okay, now let me know if you see or not the whiteboard. Do you see? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. So let's do the first example. Example one. Always easy, no complicated. Example, not too much. Okay. Example one. Example one. So it always is given the equation. Well, always no, but almost always. Suppose x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equal 1. And this, I remember. I remember my formulas for the elixir R. 
x square over a square plus y square over b square equal one. Oh, 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 another possibility is x square over b square plus y square over a square equal one, no? Uh -huh. So how do you know? Well, in this case you take, you have two numbers, 16 and nine. It's obvious that a square is 16 because 16 is the big one. It's a bigger. Therefore, a alone is a square root is case four. Okay, likewise, b square is nine, therefore b alone is three. Uh -huh. Actually, uh, in this problem, you have this kind of equation. No, all we have, remember, in this problem, in this uh, example one, in example two, I don't know what happened. Uh, it's obvious that we are in front of the horizontal uh, ellipse because the major axis lie coincident or parallel to the x axis because the big number is the corresponding variable is x. Make sense? Eh? Make sense, right? Yes, yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Another important parameter is c is the focal distance. So, so to find the C, we use using that formula. A square is equal B square plus C square. This formula is only particular for the elixir. Because, for example, when you study the, para, the hyperbola, we see again ABC, but it has different meaning and different formula. So the student confused. Oh, professor, I, are you using A? No, no, no. This is for a leak, A square. I make a sense because A is it's a, the mnemonic divide to remember that A is easy because A is the big value. Okay, always. The, in order to find the C, well, you are isolate the formula A is square root A square minus B square. So A is square root, A square is 16, a, B square is 9, and when you're subtracting a 7, and the square root seven, you, you get the decimal approximation is 2.646. This is focal distance. Okay, okay, okay. So now, okay, important now, important, important moment. I, I saw you have this kind of equation, but we have another, okay, it's this. X minus H square over A square plus Y minus K a square over b square equal one. Uh -huh. The difference between this and this is that the center of this elixir is located at the point zero zero origin. However, no, this is located at the point h comma k. And it's extremely important to remember the h is the letter associated with the x displacement. It's a shift, it's a horizontal shift. Uh huh. And K is the vertical shift, so associated with the Y. Okay. So in this example, no. In this example, fortunately, uh, the the center is located in the origin, zero comma zero. So center, you declare it center. Center. I look at the formula. Look in the formula. You can see. Wow. The center is at the point zero comma zero because H and K. We have no subtracting nothing here. So it's zero comma zero. Aha. Pero that's it. No, no, no. Let's doing. Let's doing this problem completed by hand. And after the other problem we are doing easily using the script I created for my student. Okay, you put the equation and you see the point, you see everything. And this script I can send in the next video, in the next email, sorry. Uh, when I send the video, I send the, the link connecting with this. Uh -huh. And remember, when you receive this and you open this uh, Desmond, no? Well, this is a copy of my script. So you can manipulate, delete, it's yours. This is, doesn't affect my work. Okay? I'm, uh -huh. Now, let me continue, let me continue. So I detect, wow, this leaks uh, look like, like that. Because the, 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 the answer is do the graph, no? Always the answer is do the graph. 
of this equation. Uh, I plot the center, good. Zero, zero. This is X, this is Y. Uh -huh. The vertex is N4. Entonces, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, the vertex, let me use another color. At the point, four comma zero. And negative four comma zero. Sorry, I forgot to put here zero comma zero. Okay, it's the center. So vertex. At the point, four comma zero. And negative four comma zero. How do you know that? Because A is four. Yeah, you know that A is the big value associated with X. Aha! Uh -huh. And to say now, all we have, always, 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 100% guarantee you, the, the minor axis is three. In this case, one, two, three. One, two, three, okay. Uh, this is the point 0, 0,3, and this is the point 0, 0,3. Well, the only thing you should do now is the the, fo the focus. So, wait, 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 wait. This point is called endpoint. Endpoint of a, a minor minor axis. R uh, 0,3 and uh, 0,3. Uh, now fossil, 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 fossil. Let me use another color. Maybe purple color is good. That one. Now fossil. Fossil is okay. Important, 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 important. The fossil always lie on the major axis okay and the distance is c and the distance is two points so my, basically my fossil is 2.646 comma zero and a negative 2.646 comma zero now approximately 2.6 one two is here approximately this is my fossil one f1 uh huh. F1, and this is my fossil 2 and 1, 2 here, fossil 2. Okay, by the way, the, the, the component no, is 2.646, 0, uh -huh, and this is negative 2.646, 0. Okay, so finally, my elixir looks like, like that. Ooh, 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 no good. That is a reason okay, I would like okay, you are doing this job, not in the paper, no, no, no. And Desmos, no? Because in Desmos, I create a fantastic script. I want to explain in detail now. We solve in exactly the same example one using this. And of course, the rest of the example, okay, there are a lot of examples. We are solving directly one or the mathematical part in the whiteboard, but the graphic part in Desmos. Okay, let me show you. Uh -huh. Do you see Desmos? Yes, yes. Okay, look, I created this script. In this script, I have the example, exactly the same example. Example one, two, three, four, five. Example of the elixir, uh, parabola, and hyperbola, right? And you select example one, boom. Uh -huh, and you click here. Ah, oh, this is our elixir. Okay. But the only thing uh, is missing is the point. But don't worry for this. Uh, you, for example, you in the piece of paper, you determine that A is 4. You put here in the slider 4. You declare A 4 is A. And B is 
very, very, very important. Very, very, very important. K H and K R zero. No transformation. Is exactly in the origin, the center of this elixir. Okay, there you go. So now you classify like a horizontal, no? Horizontal elixir. Boom. Can you see the point? Fantastic. Do you see, guys? Yes, yes. yes. Super. So let's do it. Let's do it. a lot of problems I bring for you. Example two, example three, example four. Uh, and you basically understand how we compute A, B, C, A, classify, say, horizontal, or vertical, and so on. Uh -huh. Okay, 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 okay. Let's focus on the important part. The important part is. Mm, let me see. Whiteboard. Come back. You see whiteboard? Do you see? Yes, yes. Okay, let's move on to example two. Okay, example two now. Example two is. Okay, 25 x squared plus nine y squared equal 225. Okay, the equation is given in that way. Obviously, this equation is no expressed in standard, standard form. Standard form, is the form that you very well know, is maybe like that, x squared over a squared, plus b squared, yeah, sorry, y squared, uh -huh, over b squared, equal one, or opposite, no? because maybe B is here and A is here. Remember, your identification, who is A and who is B, depending who is the big number, right? Bigger number. This is, and, and you, you can see, wow, 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 wow. Right hand side must be one. Right hand side must be one. And so you divide the whole thing by 225. In order to guarantee, standard four. Okay, and you divide 225 divided by 25 is nine. 225 divided by nine is 25. Uh, and the right hand side, we have one. Boom, standard four. Aha, uh, uh -huh. so this is the moment. Well, 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 can okay, you identify who is A and who is B? And remember, it's super easy because A is the big value. Actually, A square, A square is 25. Therefore, A is 5. And B square is 9. Therefore, B is 3. Okay. Uh -huh. to say what kind, what kind, what kind of the hyper um, elixir we have? We have vertical elixir or horizontal. So our elixir look like, like that, or like that. What do you think? This is horizontal and this is vertical. What do you think? Horizontal or vertical? Thinking about that. Now I dedicate my time to compute C. Well, C is easy. C is square root. A square minus B square. Uh, A is square root. Uh, 25. A square 25. B is 9. A is 16. And square is 16. Wow. It's easy. The, the focal distance is no decimal. It's just 4. Okay. So it's uh, 534. Uh -huh. Come on. Uh, what kind of the elixir we have? Uh, horizontal or vertical? Opinion. Opinion. Answer. Come on. Nobody have an idea? Wow. 
Okay. Let me reformulate the, the, the question. Uh, the, the, the A value is associated with the Y or is associated with the X? The A is the big value, the phi, is associated with the Y or associated with the X? The X, right? The X. I don't understand, guy. Repeat again. Repeat again. The X. Wow. Right, only one or two. The X. Oh. The X. So, so 25 is associated with the X or is associated with the Y? No, no in the original. In the standard. Yeah, the standard is the correct way to analyze that. Okay, 25. The the number X. Say again. The X. The X. The 25 is associated with the X, you say? Or yes, the Y? I think. No, X. no, no, no. Put the lens in. Look, look. 25 is associated with the Y. Do you say in the, in the equation? Oh, it's, yeah. I was No, no, in the original. No, 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 in the original. No, the original, no, because the original is no standard. It's not ready to analyze anything. And the standard is nice. You see, wow, the big number, is 25, is associated with the Y. Therefore, we are in front a vertical. Because the major axis is coincident with the Y axis. Good? Yes, now I understand. I understand. Okay, one more time, the center. Let me try to do at least one more example by hand. A little bit, a little bit. The center is 0, 0, because I don't see any 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 transformation, any any translation, any shift. Okay, and the vertex. Okay, okay. My, 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 my ellipse. My ellipse is the the major axis lie in the y axis and what distance a was the phi one two three four five here zero comma five one two three four five zero comma negative five and the minor axis is three okay. it is it's opposite you know in the x axis one two three one two three that point is the end point of the minor axis is 3,0 and minus 3,0. Okay, does the minor axis look like, like that? Look. Okay. Now the force is in 4. Uh, no, no good. The force is in 4. No good. It's no good. Okay. Erase this part. Okay, let me try again. Wow, too bad. No, the problem is that the whiteboard tried to fix it like a circle. I set out like that. Okay, okay. One more time, I try. Okay, to avoid this situation, I don't close. I put it here, lip, lip, don't close. Okay, no? <laughs> well, okay, okay, do you, do you understand? Uh -huh. However, the fossil is located here in four. Here. This is a fossil, 0, 0,4, 0, 0,4, and this is another fossil, 0, 0,4. Okay, uh -huh. but I don't care. Remember, the graphic we are doing using Desmos. It's elegant, and you can uh, send me the test day. Elegant. Okay, any question? Any question? Do you understand the differences? How we determine see the our elixir is vertical or horizontal? Yes or no? Yes, Are you? Yes. Uh huh. This is the most important thing. 
Ok, let's move into the, the uh, Desmos to see clear this idea. Okay. Okay. I suppose you see this one, right? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Forget about example one. Example two. Example two. Look. In the example two, I typing exactly the same. Like it's giving. No, no necessary. You putting a standard. You put it. There's no SSMR. And plot that. Boom. Do you see case vertical? Okay. Now to to determine the point. Uh, well, you set up uh, AFI. Look, you change here. Phi. Phi, 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 phi. B is three. It's a coincident with the another problem. But actually, now it's no horizontal. It's vertical axis. Boom. And you see the point. You see the vertex. The vertex look center. Vertex. Fossi. Uh, end point of the minor axis. Boom. Super fantastic. Any question? No? Okay. No question, guys. Yes or no? No, no questions. No questions. questions. Okay. Let's move on to the next example. Okay. Okay. Okay, example three. Okay, suppose this. Ooh, x minus three is square over sixteen plus y plus two is square over twenty five equal one. We this is more complicated. Okay, what what do you think about the this ellipse? Is vertical or horizontal? Mm -hmm. This ellipse look like like that or look like like that? I think vertical. Aha, uh -huh. why? Give me a reason. Because, because the, the bigger number, the A, is under the Y, is like a denominator. Super, that's the conclusion. That's the conclusion. So, so now, it's obvious that A squared is 25. Therefore, A is 5. Square root. And B squared is 16. Therefore, B is 3. But, the, bring, the new thing that brings me this problem is that A is a3 and k is negative 2. Be careful with the sign. So actually, the center of this uh, elixir lie at the point 3, comma, negative 2. Uh -huh. The reason k is opposite sign is clear because the formula is something like that. Look, x minus h square over, in this case, b square. Uh -huh, because it's vertical, no? plus y minus k squared over a squared equal one. And you see get always the superposition k in the form of minus, 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 both. So when you see minus and three, minus three, it's because h is positive three. And when you plug it in here, it stays the same sign. However, when the k is negative two, when you plug it in here, you have double negative. Negative of the formula and negative of the value, and together uh, become positive. That is a reason that the mnemonic device to do fast is you see it's negative three and the point is positive three. And it's positive two and the point is negative two, right? Uh huh. I need to find only C. 
C, 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 C es C es square root. A square minus B square. Que es square root 25. Minus 16. Es 9. Entonces, the answer is 3, ¿no? Ok. So the, first, the, first, the focal distance es... Eh, es... Es 3, ¿no? Pero, this focal distance is measured from the center. At the center, and in, in, the, in the example one and example two, was easy because the center is at the origin. So, so everything is, is easy. But at the same idea, but you take... In the center, it's three comma negative two. So, so for example, and a major axis identified is parallel to the y axis, and you move in five unit over, five unit downward. Let's see, let's see quickly in this one. Do you follow me so far? Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Let's move on this one. Do you see this one? Yes. Okay. Okay. And this example three, A F I. Uh-huh. B F four. Mm -hmm. Be careful. H, A3. And K is negative 2. Okay, you can type in, in the script or you move in the slider. But when you move in the slider, maybe it's a little bit complicated to get exactly the same point. But it's okay. So now in the example, let's come back to example three, you know? Elixir example three is this. Boom. Do you see the green elixir? Whoa. Uh -huh. And now, when you select, it's a, it's a vertical, no? You say it's vertical. It's vertical. Boom. Look at the point. Okay, the center, three comma negative two, center. The vertex, three comma three, three comma negative seven. Mm, the end point of the minor axis is from the center three units in this direction, three units in this direction. In this case, it's four units in this direction, four units in this direction. And the, by coincidence, the C distance is three. So this is three, 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 and four, four. Any question? Do you understand very well or no? Okay, I create this tool for you uh, to understand, and you focus on the important part. The other part is, is nothing. It's geometry is stupid, right? From the center, you move in A over, because you know, get vertical, no? over, downward, and the main minor axis is right, left, and the focus is over, downward. That's it. How many? The distance uh, about then using A, B, or C, depending on the point you want to put. Yes. Question. You follow me or no? Yes, no questions. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I understand. Let me know. See so you see now the whiteboard. Okay, one more example. Of the leaks. One more. Do you see one more? Yes. Example four. Example four is three x square plus seven y square plus six minus 28 y plus 10 equal to zero. This problem is 
it's the most complicated cases that you can see in the, in the test. However, uh, it is similar to the previous number three, example three, because we have a translation of the center. But the problem is that somebody <coughs> in the example three do the factorization. In this case, no. In this case, you need to do the factorization. But it's easy. <coughs> You're using completely the square. Then what is the organization? So one, one previous algebra you need to apply. For example, you could you take the x part. The x part is three. I factor out three. Three x square plus two x because actually you see a six, no? So you factor out this and this. Look, I put together. You grouping the x and the y. So it's plus 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 plus. In order to to finish the trinomial, I have the magical number box that completes the square, right? Because I need the the perfect square trinomial, no? uh -huh. and the y part is this and this. You factor out seven. So this y square minus four y plus another box. Uh huh. And the right hand side, I move in ten. Okay, I don't use it. Like a minus ten. Those two boxes, they guarantee when you introduce artificially this number that completes the square, you keep the equilibrium of the equation, no? Uh -huh. Those are now, 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 this is, remember, the formula to complete the square is b over 2 squared. And our first trinomial b is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, square is 1. And the number here is 1. When you introduce this one here, actually it's not one, it's one times three is three. In order to keep the equilibrium, you put three here. Do you understand this or not? Can you repeat it again? Uh huh. What part? The three. Uh huh. Uh, do you understand very well? Okay, I need to put one here. This is clear for you? Yes. Okay. But actually, when you introduce artificially that one because I want that this trinomial would be perfect square trinomial this one actually is no one is one time three gets a factor outside the parenthesis actually three that is the reason I put three here make sense yes thank you ah uh, okay now let's move on to the second trinomial the second trinomial is the y part is four divided by two squared. Four divided by two is two, two squared four. It's a coincident, it's four. But you need four here. However, this four is not four, it's 28. We are confronted with a four times seven. Something like that. Any, any question? I don't finish, this is just the beginning. Now the factorization, this trinomial, and this trinomial is super easy because they are when you introduce the completed square, this trinomial is perfect square. And the factorization is x plus 1 square plus 7y uh, minus 2 square equals something. Equal tw uh, 28 plus 3 is 31 minus 10, 21. Do you see that? Yes. Do you see? That? Uh huh. We finish no, because I need a standard. So you need a standard. Right hand side must be one. So you divide by twenty one. Divide by twenty one. Divide by twenty one. And let's do it. Twenty one divided by three is seven. So it actually, is x plus one square over seven. So this seven come from twenty one divided by three, and the bar of course. And this is y minus two a square and this is 21 divided by 3 is by 7 sorry 3 and it's a 1 wow and to say now this new expression is equivalent algebraically 100 percent and you see clear because in desmos i put intentionally the original and give me the elixir 
Uh -huh. And after I put this. And you see they are perfect coincidence. So the same graph. The same graph. OK, the only thing we are doing is algebra because so they are equivalent. Uh huh. Now, what do you think? This is the. Um, this is the horizontal or the vertical elixir. This is the elixir like that or elixir like that. What do you think? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Why? Because the X is big. Uh -huh. This is the reason. So A squared is seven. Therefore, A alone is radical seven. Okay, this is irrational number. Okay, you put in the calculator and the answer is 2.645. Yeah, to have some idea. And B square is three. Therefore, A alone, B alone is radical three. Okay, it's approximately, it's a weird number, right? It's, but it's okay, it's a number. It's 1.73, no, let me see, 73 to uh-huh. And what about C? Well, C is a square root. A squared minus B squared. This is always the formula for elixir. Another cone is a different formula. So A is a square root for, for no seven. Seven minus three. So A squared is seven, B squared is three, A four, and a square root four is two. Okay, nice. Look at distance two. Uh-huh, so, so now we, we start, we start, we start, we start. Suppose, get, suppose I am doing a little bit by hand to indicate you. This is the rectangular coordinate system, roughly. The center, the center. Oh, the center. I forgot the center. What is the center? What is the center of this elixir? Please help me. H, comma, K. Who is H? Who is K? Help me. Negative one, two. One. One, two, positive both? No, uh, negative one and then, um, and, yeah, negative one and then positive two. Super, opposite sign. So negative one here, and positive two here. One, two. But the center for this is a here. One, negative one, comma two. And you say that the, our elixir is horizontal, like that, right? Yes, something like that, yes. right? Uh huh. So now the rest is a little bit complicated using this decimal stupid number, but basically this distance is A, this distance is B, and this distance is a focal diameter is C. Uh huh. So I, I go to the script que, que, que we have available for this job. Uh, let's do it. So far it's clear? So far it's clear or confused? It's clear so far. Okay, no problem. Oh. Do you see your um, demo? Oh no. No? Yes, no. Yes? Yes. Okay, example four. Oh, exactly. We predict. Look at that. However, however, A is like a seven. OK, let me delete that number here over there. In the keyboard of this most I have radical seven. OK, nice. And this is radical three, no? Radical three. Uh -huh. And what about H and K? Well, H is negative one. Negative one. And K is positive three. No, 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 positive two. Uh, and what kind of the elixir we have? We have, we have, we have, we have. Horizontal, no? Boom. 
le digo, le me make a zoom, to see more clear, eh, center, eh, eh, vertex, en purple color, eh, en point of the minor axis, en red color, um, eh, fossil, en blue color. End of story. Super easy, but super complicated. Easy. Easy or no? It's okay. It's okay. Okay, just let's move on to parabola to understand much better the parabola. Guys, this is important. When you take calculus, you need to know and detail this because the teacher is supposed to you know that. Okay, maybe the teacher refresh your memory a little bit, but not too much. Okay, so now let me go, 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 share uh, whiteboard. Do you see whiteboard? Yes. Let me explain in detail the theoretical part of the parabola and the way you never see in your life. Okay, parabola. Uh -huh. We have two kinds of parabola. Again, vertical and horizontal. Suppose. Suppose this parabola. This is horizontal. Bueno, it's horizontal. We have two versions. Suppose, 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 suppose que dice ese parábola, like that, look. Okay, see, open to the right, or open to the left, and both K are horizontal, no? Okay, I suppose que dice the X axis and Y axis, in any case. Okay. Exactly the same here, and another parabola here. Okay. And we have another. Okay, open, over, or downward. Over, or down. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, how do you know? Bueno, easy. The formula is for the parabola horizontal, get this. Let me split the, the, this is horizontal. Parabola H, horizontal, and parabola vertical. The formula for the horizontal is Y squared equal 4PX. Boom, 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 boom. And the formula for the vertical is x squared equal 4py. This is super easy to identify what kind of parabola we have, depending of the who is the square. So we have two variables. Uh, in the least, uh, you remember that both variables is a square. Square x, square y. No, no, in the parabola, no. In the parabola, we have a, one square and another no square, linear. The identification, see, the square is a y, the parabola is horizontal. See, if the square is x, the parabola is vertical. Uh, how do you know in what direction open? Well, open in the direction defined by the parameter p. In the parabola, we have no a, b, c. No, no, a p, only one. See, P is positive number, is this guy. See, P is negative, is this guy. So you detect it, wow, it's horizontal, because Y is a square and X no. And you analyze the specific example, P is equal 20, positive, oh, it's open to the right. Or P is negative five, oh, it's open to the left. And I like what happened here, see, P is positive, Open, open, 
uh, op and cp is negative up and down. Make sense so far? Make sense yes. so far? Okay, okay, but we have more information, please. This is just the, the elementary information. We have more detail about parabola. Look. Suppose, suppose hypothetical. Okay, our example that we are doing in a few minutes is um, is, uh, is horizontal. Uh -huh. What important point and what important line you need to define in order to do 100% perfectly my, my, my graphic. Okay, they want this famous point is the vertex. Okay, it's the vertex. We have another famous point here. Okay, it's the focus. We have only one. In the elixir, we have two focus. In plural focus. In singular focus. We have one. And always the focus lie inside the parabola. So see the parabola open here, the focus here. See the parabola open here, the focus here. See the parabola open here, the focus here. And see the parabola open down, the focus down here. Never the focus is outside the parabola. This idea clear? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, okay, Professor, but what, what, what is the distance here? What is the distance P? This distance P. The distance from the vertex and the focus P. Uh -huh. That's it, no. We have two lines, important line, okay, this line. In this case, it's a vertical line. It's directrix. Directrix is the name of this line. Uh -huh. And the distance is also P here. It's super easy. You determine the vertex. P in one direction is a focal. P in another direction is directrix. This is important, directrix. And important also is the axis of symmetry. Okay, it's the axis, we study this, when you study no conic section, you study quadratic function. This is the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Okay, the axis that okay, split the parabola into a pop bar. Uh -huh, that's it, no? We have more, okay, the famous Focal diameter uh -huh. and associated with this endpoint of focal diameter. Of focal diameter. Uh -huh. Pay attention to this. It's not complicated, but it's the part that the student normally forgot. We have a segment here. Uh, this is a focal diameter. It's a segment passing through the, the focus. And this distance, guys, is to be. To be, to be. In total, the focal diameter is 2p plus 2p is 4p. So that distance, the purple goal is the focal diameter, is 4p. And this is the reason in the formula we have 4p here. Okay? Uh -huh. But this endpoint of the focal diameter is important because give me the idea how open or so wider or narrow is our parabola. Good? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Let's see example. Example, we manipulate algebraically as always and after we go to Desmos and do the graph. May I raise the board? I suppose he is, no? Yes, yes. Okay. Example one of the parabola. Okay. Suppose this x squared equal a y. Wow. What kind of parabola we have? Horizontal or vertical?
What do you think? Horizontal or vertical? Vertical. Uh -huh. How do you know? Because of the x squared. Super. Uh, this vertical open, 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 over or downward? Up. Why? Because the eight is bigger than zero. No, no, uh -huh, it's positive. Okay, good, good. Okay, you compare with this standard. X squared equal four p y. And you see clear like a water. Okay, four p is eight, and this is a specific sample. So four p is equal to eight. No p is two. And p is positive. So it's obvious that it's vertical parabola open up. Make sense? Let's do at least one example by hand, easy, non complicated. Okay, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I forgot to say something important. You keep in mind this equation, but you keep in mind another equation, guess this. Look, let me show you. No good, I don't like this. Yes, suppose when you have translation, translation, we have x minus h squared equal 4p, parenthesis y minus k. Uh -huh. This is the case in which the vertex, it's important to understand, that in the parabola we have no center, center no, vertex. And the least say yes, in the least we have center. In the circle we have center, but in the parabola no center, it's vertex. Uh -huh. The vertex is located at the point h comma k. And the same idea, I guess, opposite sign the same. But in this case, no h, no k. This h is zero, k is zero. Therefore, obviously, this parabola, the vertex is located at the point zero comma zero. Nice. So the vertex of this example is zero comma zero. I forgot for, for a moment this formula, complicated formula. Ah. So say, I know also, I know also that my parabola, this is the, the vertex, uh -huh, 0, 0, 0, 0 vertex. Open up, open up, open up. I, I exactly, I don't know exactly what shape, but I take two, the, the P value, and p-value is 2, so it's 1, 2. This point is the point 0, 2, which is the focus. Uh -huh, uh, 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 I know very, very, very well that the, uh, the focal diameter is 8. It's that number, always is 8. Uh, a is a, a 4 in both directions. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that point is the point 4, 2. And that point is the point negative four comma two. Okay, does my parabola look like, like that? I don't know. I try to do my best, but no. In this one, it's the only possibility you have to do perfectly. This is why. And that's it. No, because you need to just say what is the directrix equation. Directrix equation. Uh -huh, important equation and graphic, of course. It's a line. In this case, directrice is the horizontal line. Let me try to do my best. Well, no, here. One, two, and negative two. Is y equal negative two, a directrice equation. And don't forget the axial symmetry is exactly here on the y axis. And the equation, this is the axis of symmetry. Guys, you cannot forget, you forgot one detail in the graph, you have zero. Okay? Uh -huh. And the parabola vertex, focus, endpoint of the focal diameter, this guy, and this guy, SCC, this is 2P to B, in total 4P, 
and for BSA in this example, uh -huh. and direct this equation and axis of symmetry equation. Axis of symmetry is y axis que es x equal zero. It's a vertical line. Any question? Uh -huh. This is the way that the teacher of calculus want can you manipulate the cone section. And I promise in calculus you see a lot of cone section. This is an important curve in algebra. Professor, okay, let's move on. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Uh, why is the directrix uh, negative two? Yeah, why you connect to? Why? Because it's in opposite direction. Okay, the vertex is in zero. The focus is in positive two, and directrix is in opposite direction. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay, let's see now in the smooth. Okay, let me switch in the screen to the smooth. There you go. You suppose in this moment you see this. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, no hyperbola, no leaks anymore. Now let's move on to the parabola. Parabola example one is this. Oh, super easy. Do you see it's vertical? Uh huh. Uh huh. And just I go go to the top part of the script. You define. I don't care a and b because a and b is for the leaks. You know? I care h and k. k is zero both. Zero comma zero is the vertex. Zero and zero. Okay, and P, oh, P is two. P is two in our specific example, P is two. Okay, and you classify like a, like a, like a vertical parabola. Boom. Bada boom. Look at that. This is the vertex. This is the focus. This is the end point of the focal diameter. This is the axis, the um, axial symmetry is this line is dotted line. You see y equals x equals zero on the y axis. And the form the equation for the for the um, directrix is y equal negative two as the horizontal line. Any question? No. Wow. We are the best. Okay. Example one, everyone understand very well. Let's move on to example two. Do you see what more or no? Yes or no? Guide me. Yes. Example two. Parabola. We are doing example two of the parabola is y squared equal 16x. Uh -huh, guys, I suppose the question is always do the graph. Uh -huh, and determine the any parameter associated with this. So I determine a, b, c, h, k, a, p, something, depending on the cone section that we are. Uh -huh, so what kind? What kind of parabola we have in this problem? We have horizontal parabola, we have vertical parabola. Horizontal or vertical? And in what direction open? Open up, open down, open left, open right. Come on, help me. What kind of parabola is this? Horizontal to the right. Exactly. Horizontal to the right. Uh huh. Because automatically you compare with the equation. No, this equation no good. You see that the square part is a y. You take this, this no. And you classify like a horizontal. Uh -huh. How you determine say, right, uh, right or left? Determine the p value. It's obvious it's 16, it's 4p. So 4p is equal to 16. Therefore, p is 16 divided by 4, that's 4. And 4 is positive. That means it's to the right. 
Okay? This is the skill that you need to get to do this job, to this graph. It's super easy. I don't know why the student forgot. Okay? Uh huh. And so now, one more time, the vertex is located at the point 0, 0, because I don't see any H and K, no? And the focus is in that direction, no? Okay, what this time? P, PK4. So I suppose it's one, two, three, four. This is the focus. Four comma zero. Directories is in opposite direction. One, two, three, four. In this case, it's a vertical line. The equation is x equal negative four. The axial symmetry is here. Is coincident with the x axis y equal zero. The equation horizontal line. And the 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 the, 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 the uh, way in which our parabola is open or wider depending on p, no? Uh -huh. And this distance is 16. But 16 divided by 2 is 8. So actually, gee, my parabola is too wider. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. That point. And A in another direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 in this direction. This is approximately my parabola. Do you see or no? Do you understand or no? Yes. Okay, this is important. Vertex. This guy. Focus. That guy. End point of the focal diameter. In this case, it would be 4, comma, you know? Because that distance is 4. Remember, it's passing through the focus. And the distance is 2P and 2P. And 2P and P, in our example, is 4. And 2 times 4 is 8. Uh -huh. And this, the other point is the point. 4, negative 8, no? Uh -huh. And the rest is directories. It's the vertical in this case, no? It's open. And axial symmetry is horizontal. Good, very good. Let's move on to the decimal to see more clear, more beautiful. This idea. Mm-hmm. We are doing now example two. Delete everything. Example two, look. This is example two. Which is so obvious the horizontal. Uh -huh, the equation. I just type in the equation. Guy, if you want you change this equation in your script. Uh, doesn't affect my my script, no? I create this for for the lecture, no? However, you can create your own example in the for for the test or for the homework. Okay, and so now I declare that P is four, no? P is four, P is four. I change the P, P is four. And the H and K are zero. No? Okay, nice. And this is horizontal, horizontal parabola. Look at that. Vertex, focus, and point of the focal diameter, directories, this line, and axial symmetry, this line. End the story. Fantastic. I told you, we are the best in Miami Day College. Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, so, some students uh, 
uh, do a comment in ratemyprofession.com about me, of course, and say that this class is not for the baby. This is a hard class. Do you see it's hard, right? Oh no. Do you see the whiteboard? Yes. yes, or no? yes. Okay. It's, it's not for the baby. It's a complicated class because it's two two class together. It's Mac 11 05 and Mac 11 40 together. And it's Mac 11 06. Okay. So it says not only for a student. I suppose that you will select or the student can have the, the good uh, GPA. Okay, so it's up to you so you get successfully or no. I try to do my best job. Suppose three. Square equal negative four. Wow. Parenthesis X minus two. Do you see that I little by little I complicate your life, no? Okay, so what kind of a parabola, no? A parabola. What do you, okay, wait, wait, big picture. How you identification? Que se elixir o parabola? Well, elixir have x square and y square. Parabola, no. Parabola have y square and x no square, or x square and y no square. This is the clue. Uh -huh. And we have another group of the hyperbola. Pero no, 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 no. No, no, hyperbola is after. Okay, this is actually a parabola. Okay, everyone understands this. Now, what kind? Uh, is, uh, is horizontal or vertical? Horizontal or vertical? In what direction? Up or down? Horizontal. Horizontal. Uh-huh. And what direction? Well, I am, I am, I am not sure, no? Oh, I am sure. I compare with the standard. The equation standard is y minus k square is equal for b x minus h. And we compare. I see, wow, wow, it's clear for me that the vertex of this parabola is the point negative three comma two, no? No, 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 no. It's negative, it's two comma negative three, completely opposite. Is, who is H? H is two. Who is K? K is negative three. Do you see that? Uh -huh. Ah, likewise. Negative four is equal for p. And negative four is equal for p. Therefore, p is negative one. And when it's negative, it that indicates us that this famous horizontal parabola open to the left. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So I have roughly idea how it look like my parabola. My parabola is. Bueno, es, the bird is located at the point 2, negative 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2, negative 3 is down, 1, 2, 3. I plot the its point. Uh -huh, uh, this is the vertex. This is my parabola open, walk, walk in that direction. Okay, but no, no, I, more, I need more details. I need more details. So I have in my hand P, I have in my hand H and K. Okay, now. The one of the focus obviously is inside the parabola, but what distance? One distance. Okay, see this point is two comma negative three. The focus I suppose get here. And this point is a point one comma negative three. Because the only thing I did was moving to the left one unit. Uh -huh. yeah, I know it's left because it's negative, no? Uh -huh. And of course, it stay the same Y component because the motion is horizontal. Make sense? Yes. Okay. 
directrix, well, 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 it's a line like that. Dun, 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 dun. Uh -huh. And the distance is the same, pp. Si pi is one, okay, let me make a zoom. That distance is one, que es pi, and the distance is also one. And that point is two. Therefore, the equation for this vertical line is x equal three. Make sense? Little by little, you understand? This is the, the this part in the book is called analytic geometry, because actually this is graphic. So you are doing something uh, algebraically. However, you come back to the plane and slow down, relax. You determine the vertex, you determine the focus, in what direction the focus, I know is inside the parabola, what distance, P, and P is equal to 1, no? and 1 is negative 1, but negative 1, the absolute value is important because the distance is positive, right? And the negative indicates only the direction. Uh -huh, now, the end point of the focal diameter is, you know, that distance, I don't see very well here. It's this and this. And we get that point, que that point is 1 comma negative 1. Ah, make it sense, it's 1 comma negative 1. 1 comma negative 1. Uh -huh. and, 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 and that point is 1 comma negative 5. Okay, so say we have, okay, and I forgot, I forgot the axial symmetry is this line passing through always to the vertex. Is the line y equal because the horizontal no? minus three que is the same component of the k. Okay, and in general, the formula is easy. The formula is for the directories x equal h. Well, this is for this parabola, que es horizontal. So it's very it's completely opposite. And y equal k. Make sense? Yes. Uh -huh. Let's move on to this more to see more clear. Okay, I got it. Uh, this is the example three, no? Mm -hmm. That one. Okay, this is the question. I copy exactly. So I don't change anything. Uh -huh. However, 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 the only parameter I need to define is p. Okay, p is negative one. Negative one. That is the reason that our parabola open to the left. Negative one. And h and k. K is h is two. And K is, 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 is negative three, negative three is K. Uh, after I do the graph again, but under the classification, okay, we are working with the horizontal parabola. Boom, look at that. This is my famous spot. Okay, again, vertex. Focus, and point focal diameter, uh, axial symmetry, and directrix. Boom. No back. Okay, let's do one more. Very, very, very complicated, of course. And let's see what's going on. You see what more? Yes. Yes. Example four now. Look, four x squared minus twenty x minus eight y plus fifty seven 
equals it. Oh, yo, yo, I have no idea. I suppose that I need to do some algebra. The complete square idea. But before do anything, look at the equation. This is parabola or elixir. Again, look at the elixir and the equation of the elixir always. You can find x squared and y squared. In the parabola, no. In the parabola, sometimes you have x squared and y no squared. Or y squared and x no squared. So what do you think? Is it x or a parabola? Parabola. Uh -huh. And what kind of parabola? Because this situation is vertical and this is horizontal, no? What kind of parabola you believe? Vertical. Vertical. This is the idea. Okay, now the complicated part. Okay, the complicated part is the organization of this. Okay, so now, because this guy 20x and ay represent like a horizontal and vertical shift, and like a transformation. No? So actually, I need to manipulate something algebra in order to express it in that way, for example, in that way, is x minus h square equal 4p y minus k let's do it how well 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 you take the x part because the part is a square you you try to find see is there common five to get obvious yes it's four x square minus five x plus and completely square uh-huh in the y part, you move to the right hand side because I see the, I try to manipulate this equation only it can look like similar to this. So, so I move a y minus 57. No? Uh -huh. I remember another box here, get the same box of this. Uh, and just the formula to complete the square is always the same. B divided by two squared, but in this case, it's, even, it's, it's not even number, it's phi. But don't worry, phi over two square is 25 over four. No? So I copy the number, 25 over four. Yeah, I copy here just 25, no over four because when you multiply 25 over 4 times 4, the 4 is canceled and it stay alive only 25, right? Everyone follow me so far, the organization? Yes. yes. Ready. Now, the factorization of this trinomial is 4 times x minus the square root of this guy gets 5 over 2 square is equal a y uh -huh, and 25 if negative 57 and 25 is minus 32. Oh, I like that because I factor out also. Factor out 8, no? 8. Factor out 8. Does it y minus 4, no? Makes sense. But remember, in my equation, coefficients here is 1. No allow any number. So you divide by 4. Just divided by four. Uh huh. So definitely, definitely, my equation is x minus five over two x square equal to y minus four. Wow, amazing, guys! And this is one hundred percent equivalent algebraically. <laughs> it's the same equation of the ugly original equation. Can nobody understand? But now it's clear. Uh, you can identify that our center, center, no, vertex, sorry. No, no center. We have no center in parabola. Our vertex is located at the point, uh, phi over two, que es H, coma, 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 coma four. Okay, or oh, if some people prefer in decimal, it's 2.5. Because it's easy to plot that in the rectangular continuity system. 
and also decimals always give me the answer in decimal approximation. Okay, and now identification, okay, 4P, 4P is 2, is it 4P? Look, 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 compare. This part is that part. Therefore, P is 2 over 4, que es 1 half. Pero es positive, and that indicates us que de parabola open, 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 what direction open the parabola? Left, right, up or down? Because I forgot that part. Huh? In what direction open? That parabola. Up. Up. Very well. Because it's very good. Very well. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the vertex is located at the point. This is a weird point. No? So now to do the graph in in full accuracy. Let's move into decimals. No? Okay. 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 And okay. Good. Okay, guys. So in this example, H and K. H is 2.5. I type it 2.5. Oh, 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 this is another example. Let me delete that and delete that, of course. Put all enable this example. It's example four. It's example four. Okay, typing. Look, I don't do anything here. I type in directly exactly as given. And the problem, I type it. Boom, America. Look, America parabola. Okay, magic. Now, 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 I come back to the top part of the script. Yeah, I declare a. H is equal to 0.5, nice. And K4, positive 4. Nice. Uh, um, P, 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 P is 2, no? No, 1 half. P is 1 half. Okay, so you put 1 half or 0.5 either way, pero, pero positive. 0 0.5. Excellent. Okay, and we classify like a vertical parabola, no? vertical parabola. Bang! Look at that. Look at the boy. Uh, vertex, focus, and point focal diameter, axial symmetry, and directrix equation. Okay, in this case, is a horizontal line y equal y equal 3.5 no? because this point is 2.5 and this distance is one half and the other direction is 3.5 3.5 5 equal 3.5 and this is a 4 and this is 3.5 0 0 here no? let me show you 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 our parabola is translation for unit up because k is 4 and 2.5 unit to the right because K H H sorry is 2.5. Mm -hmm. Now it's clear or no? Okay, to say now stop here because the only condensation get hyperbola is a little bit complicated. Okay, now I want to dedicate well no no all the lecture next week for the hyperbola and we try to finish the most important part of this. Okay, remember the I, I posted the homework on the test file and this is due April 28. It's the last day. It's the last day. April 28, we finish. Uh -huh. When I send the test number five, I will send for every one of the final tests. And you take if you need to improve or not. And you and the test final is only written, no online. Online, the last one is test number five. Clear or confusing? Are you clear? 
clear. So the clear. final is optional? Optional. optional. Clear. Uh, okay, okay, my recommendation is you compute your average. The average is super easy. We have 10 tests in total, five reading, five online. You adding every grade and divided by 10. Entonces, you get the number. Suppose you get 85. 85B. B is good for you? Mm, entonces, I don't care the final. I want to improve because I need A. Take the final. Suppose que you are doing a mess in the final, your grade stays the same, 85. Si something is good, entonces, I include it in the final and the, in the equation. Okay? Yes, thank yes, you. Thank you. Bye-bye, guys. See you next week. Bye, Professor. Bye-bye.